let me just say, if aliens wind up implanting eggs in my chest or something and I eat one of you, I'm sorry. Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? This quality is terrible. I don't even have a real camera. Whoa! Yeah, I still don't have any lights, so basically... I still need audio equipment and it's so... Expensive. So yeah, I guess I don't really have any excuses now. Hey what's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ines Lea and welcome to the creatorgalaxy.com space station. Here in space we are experimenting with intergalactic filmmaking skills and visual effects. In today's video I'm going to show you how to do some really advanced object removals in Adobe Premiere Pro, which is crazy on its own. Things that you wouldn't usually think of being possible in Adobe Premiere Pro, but this video um, is going to show you that it's possible. Although you will need third-party plugins, I'm one of the best in the industry, and that is Boris Effects. If you have heard of them, uh, congrats, you should. And if you haven't, um, then shame on you because they have some really awesome products. And especially if you have been working with After Effects, it's very likely that you've already come across of one of their products and that's called Mocha AE, which is a free integrated tool in Adobe After Effects from Boris Effects. But in today's video, we're going to take a look at Mocha Pro, which is a super advanced 2D tracker, uh, rotoscoper and object removal tool uh, that you can use in Adobe Premiere Pro or After Effects or even other software. So if you're interested in that be sure to check out the description below so before we continue I do want to say that everything that we will be doing in Adobe Premiere Pro you can also do it in Adobe After Effects and it would be even advised to do it there because it's just a little bit easier uh, to do this entire workflow but I just wanted to show you what Premiere is also capable of and some people only have Premiere Pro so let's take a look on how to create that shot you just saw in the intro so the first thing that you will need is this shot here so I'm walking here. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm walking here. You see already the tripod in the shot. You can see that this is a camera movement and then it shows you um, the, the light in the shot. And I kind of act surprised while they're already there, but yeah, they shouldn't be. So we're going to first remove these objects and then afterwards we're going to add the particles coming in. Without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that I want to do is drag my video into a new sequence. Next I want to go to effects and search for Mocha Pro. I'm going to apply this effect to my video layer by double clicking or dragging it on top of my video. So then we can open up Mocha Pro. The first thing that I want to do is find a shot where we have both lights and it's like fairly visible so let's say 250 remind this frame because this one is going to be very important then I'm just going to make this full screen and I'm going to take here the x spline tool and start rotoscoping or kind of masking around my objects so the first thing that I'll do is zoom in here on my camera and then go around it somewhat like this Then right click once you're done with your mask and you have your entire mask here. I'm going to call this camera. Then I'm going to make another x tool and this time while X I'm kind of, I kind of uh, shift my view here and with Z I can zoom out here. Then I'm going to mask around my light. And then right click again. You can of course still manipulate your mask and if you think it's a little bit too big just kind of tuck it in a little bit and then next what I want to do is I want to select myself here because in the shot I'm actually moving and I also want to be able to track the ground because we want to track the ground because it's a parallax as you can see um, the top part is on a very different location as the bottom part and these two distances are maybe 15 meters uh, I don't know they're kind of far apart so you can see as it moves there is a lot of parallax going on. So we need to make sure that our removal is going to apply on the correct spots. So we also need to track our background. So to do that, I will just go to 250 here, just so we have all the tracks starting from here. And I will x tool and go around myself here and just roughly, it doesn't have to be perfect. Well, maybe a little bit more perfect than this. And there we go. So for this one, I wanna go over here and just uncheck scale rotation and shear. I just want the translation. And once you've done that, we just wanna track it backwards. So once 
once you get this pop-up, it's just because our tripod, well, our light is getting out of the shot. So we just have to make sure that we check it here and then we can just select the mask and just get it out of the shot. There we go. And now we have this one already tracked well. We just want to make sure that right here it's all the time masking around the object to make sure that everything looks all right. And then from here we can, well actually, I'm going to rename this also light and this actor. So we have our, we have our camera and we can track backwards again. And while you're tracking, you can always stop and then just kind of readjust your mask wherever you think it's necessary. So it's very important that you really take a look uh, while it's tracking and see when it's kind of getting out of the track. You can also just leave the entire track, do it and then do it afterwards. I just prefer to do it uh, that way. And also for this, uh, for my actor here, well, me, I just wanna go around it and just make sure that I'm all the time in my mask, which is very important later on. And I will show you why. Okay, so it's not important until here. So the most important thing is until the camera is gone and until the light is gone. That's all the tracking information that we need. By the way, once something is out of the um, canvas and it's kind of acting difficult, what you can do is just uncheck the gear icon. The gear means that it's tracking that particular thing. So we don't need to track um, the other ones until the beginning, so then we just uncheck it. So now we're just going to check all of them on again and we will click on one of these and go to the spot that we started at frame 250 and now we want to track it forwards. So I think it's until the moment that I'm kind of surprised that the, cam uh, the light is also coming in the shot. So I'm surprised the camera is in the shot. Then I'm surprised that the light is coming in the shot and more tracking data than that we don't need. So we can actually go ahead and stop over there. So I think that's this spot over here. So right here, I get into the shot, boom, I get a surprise from the camera and then I move forward and boom. I'm surprised by the light. So this is enough information that we need in, in order to continue with uh, the, the removal. And actually we didn't need to track forwards uh, from this spot, so okay. So now what we wanna do is we wanna make a ground plane so we can track the ground and that's going to be the removal reference, let's say. So what we wanna do is create a rectangle and we're just going to make a simple rectangle all over our place here and then just kind of make it a little bit bigger and then we also want to kind of skew it a little bit so it's covering the entire ground here okay and as we're using this actor as a uh, translation uh, it's just not going to um, take any information of where my actor is. So that's why we actually masked around myself. So we don't take that as information for the track. So it's really going to take a look at only the ground here. So that's exactly what we need. We can also enable the grid here and then we can also enable the show planner surface. And with this, we can kind of make uh, it look like we're actually on that uh, ground plane and kind of um, recreate uh, the environment. So look at the horizon and try to match that up a little bit and, and make it a good looking uh, 3D representation of our ground plane here. So something like this I think looks all right. And once you're satisfied with that, we also want to enable perspective here and then for the minimal pixels used, we want to just crunch that up until 100. So I'm just going to click over here and just enter 100. This is going to make the track a little bit slower, but a lot more accurate. And before we actually start our track, we want to go to our actor and just uncheck the gear icon and lock in this layer. So that way we're not going to get any information off that track. It's not going to interfere with our track and we're just going to use this as a reference. And we're also going to disable the gears for the lighting cameras. We only want to uh, track this here. So we're going to 
check background and just drag it to the bottom here and then track it backwards. The reason I put the ground layer below is because it goes under the holdout masks. You kind of have to see it like this. Objects that are closer to the camera should be stacked higher in the layer list. And as the ground is further away from the camera and the light, we should put it below. All right, so here the track gets lost. We can just click OK and then just go to the moment where you don't really see anything and you just see the track still working. Just make sure also by looking at these blue lines, if anything kind of shifts around. So take a very close look. And I think the track is holding very steady. So that's that's great. OK, so um, once you want to kind of uh, kind of trim a, a track, you can also click on the track and then go over here and just click this here and that will end the track here. We could have also done that for the lights and the camera. Uh, so that's how to do that. Um, basically 250 is the last track really necessary. So I'm just going to leave it at that and not track forwards anymore. Uh, then what, once we've done that, we wanna go into our light and our camera and we wanna go to the remove tab here. So we click here, we want to go to a location that we want to start or remove at. And I do want to start at like frame 250 because that's my kind of go to frame or actually maybe just a little bit before that. When I get kind of scared, like, whoa, OK, so like right here. So I want the removal to be until 241. So I'm going to do my clean plate at 241 because I see my line, my camera. It's a nice wide um, kind of shot where we see everything. It wouldn't be okay to just see the camera because that's gonna get hard. We need to see everything in the shot and then we will click on create. So we're going to create a frame here and save that. And then we're going to open up Adobe Photoshop. So uh, we're going to import the clean plate. And there we have it. And basically what we wanna do is take like our lasso tool and just draw around our mask. But before we do that, we are going to layers, just duplicate the shot by just dragging it into a new layer. So we just have the original still to work with. Um, basically this workflow was actually a tip from Mary over at Boris Effects because I was having some difficulties at first doing this removal because this is a very challenging removal. The objects are very close to the camera. There is a lot of parallax going on. So she showed me a lot of cool tips and tricks. Um, so this removal is dedicated to her. Thank you. <laughs> so we go around the camera. And then we can also hold all to just remove parts. If we think we'd select a little bit too much here, a little bit too much here, we can uh, just go and perfectionize our selection a little bit. So that's looking all right. Maybe also here because we don't have any objects there. We want to remove that part. And once you're satisfied with everything, you can right click and go to fill. So this window is going to pop up and then we go to contents and we are going to select content aware and opacity obviously 100% and click okay and boom our object has been removed. If we deselect that, it's actually already doing a crazy good job at removing this. So basically, we're finished. If you really wanna be like the best student in the class, let's say we can go to our cloner tab and go and kind of use this to kind of uh, fix a little bit of imperfections. Maybe you can toggle on and off and see what's going on here. Okay, we do see some here. So you can see some imperfections and we can clean them up and yeah, just play around with that. I'm going to leave that up to you on doing a perfect removal here. Uh, so the cloner tool and the content aware tool, but the cloner, uh, the content aware is already doing a great job. So let's move over to our light now. And we want to also click on L again to get our lesser tool going. And we're going to make a selection around there. Boom. And then we can go over to ourself and just remove it as well, just uh, to have a nice clean plate. We don't really need it, but yeah, just let's remove ourselves just because we can. And go again, fill content aware, boom. Okay, so now we have a, a removed shot. We can again uh, play around a little bit more with everything. So but before I do that, and this is actually the trick of, of Mary that I didn't think about, is just to bring this underneath your original and then go with the uh, eraser tool and really just erase the parts that really need erasing. So you're going to take a small brush and make the hardness zero and then just go and kind of just paint out your, your light, but just really where it needs to be removed. So that way you're not going to have any artifacts in parts that didn't really need removal because the selection we made was very rough. And then you can merge these two layers 
and then we will go to file and save it and then we're done with our content aware so we filled up these empty spaces and then we want to go to our video again and first what i want to do is kind of close mocha and i just want to click on here and just alt drag it on top i'm just going to check this off so we can come back to this later we will click um well if we need to actually and then i'm going to use this one is going to be my camera so i'm going to label it let's say blue and then i'm going to drag it all drag it on top and then right click label this yellow and this is going to be my light so for the blue i'm going to open up mocha and i just want to um delete the light so we have only the camera here close it save it and then for the yellow one we want to open it and delete the camera the reason I'm doing this is the camera comes earlier in the shot than the light so we have the light here we can click on here go to frame 241 that's right here and then we want to go to the remove tab and we're going to use a clean plate we're going to click edit we want to delete this one and then just go and find our actual clean plate click OK open that up and here in the frame number we want to set it to 241 which is our frame rate the frame number we used for that clean plate we will click OK use clean plates exclusively we want to check that on we want to select linear here and then go to the actual frame here so 241 and there we go and we want to click this gear icon which is going to calculate the removal and it's removed so now we can check it backwards if we're going to revert that removal we can see that our object has been removed and it's working properly so once you've done that you can just close mocha and now we can go to the camera here and just do the same thing so now what we want to do is um enable just the camera and go to a location where we see the camera and then we go to the module render just open up the module render and we want to make sure that we render the remove and there we go we have our removal and then we want to do the same for the light so enable this layer and then we go to the render module we do the remove and we'll see it boom it's gone and then we also want to go to the mat and apply the mat here and just apply like a little bit of a feather and the same for uh, the camera here so apply a feather something like 10 and for the apply mat we just want to make sure we go to visible layers and we just deselect everything except the light okay and then for the camera as well visible layers everything except the camera okay and just so it doesn't lose all the information i'm just going to nest these layers so this is the light and this is the camera you can either give this a name and then uncheck these layers and go to the point where the camera comes in that's right here we trim it until here and then go to the point where the light comes in and that's until right here so then we have something like this have it for uh, both objects coming into your shot so that's really cool all right so that's basically it and how to remove advanced stuff in Adobe Premiere Pro it was a long one but a very cool tutorial I think so if you enjoyed it be sure to give this video a like also be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay notified when you want to see my new videos and also check out Boris effects because they have some really awesome products links are in the description and apart from that create epic videos I'll see you in the next one. Take care and goodbye.